No, I don't, I don't well, I'll pay them a little, not that much. Okay, so does it make sense to first um, do, do the global, local, cool, geeky, entre, I think we should probably do that first, and then we rank based on what we, because, um, so let's just, let's just bang through that. Um, which, um, that, that, that's, that's kind of local. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I think it's cool and geeky. <laughs> it would be, it would be cool, but I think only geeks would find it cool. I don't know. Well, it's, it, it's difficult, well, but it, it's difficult for others to figure out how would they take what you, what's being done. Yeah. So maybe a little too geeky? Yeah. Geeky okay. Spectrum. And pretty dang techy because... Yeah. Um, and then there's no minimal variable. That's yeah, that's I don't, I don't that's. Know what that is. Yeah. So is a is a high number good here or a low number? That, we could just say I high. Zero on that one. Yeah. Well, is. Um, because there's no no is zero. Okay, so so um, we'll just we'll just do it. Sure, zero's fine on me. Yeah. Zero's fine. There's there's no. Um, but then uh, something that's going to rank high, something that has a good. Uh, minimal, we'll just, we'll rank as a five. Okay. Um, let's kill that. It's killing my screen. Okay. Um, carbon nu neutral maybe. I think, I think that's kind of global. The stamp, um, pretty much, I think it's... And it is, interestingly, I actually know he's a branding guy in Washington that actually was part of the team that designed the um, the calorie kind of Oh really? Thing. Yeah. The USDA deal? Yeah. Huh. So he'd be a cool guy to talk about. Okay. About okay. Um, what what well, it's, in terms of being out of create a compelling story, I think that's easy to do. I think that's cool. Okay. It's it's it is fairly entrepreneurial too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? Um, it, it's this is fairly entrepreneurial because there's not a whole lot of tech no involved. Tech yeah, a minimum product, probably fairly high. Easy. Give it a five, four, five. What, what you gotta do it. You gotta do it. What's your scale? Uh, I was going. Well, we have five. zero to five. Yeah. Right. Can we go to six? Well, five's got a medium. Uh, medium. I was thinking I was thinking five is the highest, so. Um, like a difficulty of creating the minimum viable product? Mm -hmm. Zero to five? Okay. Yeah, so so um so zero means you probably wouldn't take us very long to research, find a couple of products that we can figure out what the carbon footprint was in producing mm -hmm. and design a label and stick it on one. Yeah, so just I'll just say zero um, zero equals hard, um, five equals easy. You might even get a, uh, an end with free delay on that. Right in with some of your bags you take. Because I know down at their Ontario factory in Oregon, they're basically running um, bio, bio waste from their grease vats mm. through uh, gasification process. For electricity? They run the juniper through it. They run a lot of biomass through it mm. to um, create their Electricity? Products. Mm -hmm. electricity mm -hmm. Yeah, get a couple of big brands like that on board, and then also get it with um, and a whole bunch of local sort of Montana producers of products and things, and even down to kind of people selling huckleberry jams and things at the yeah. farmer's market. Yeah, yeah, because this, this would be, yeah, this would be kind of a um, entrepreneurial thing. Okay. Um, sulfur removal, I, I think what we were talking was fairly local. We're like, okay, What's that? If you design what I was thinking, if you could remove sulfur from a small scale means you could go global on it. Because you've got every, basically every municipal waste dump, or not municipal waste, but bio waste, like um, the wastewater facility that are just mending in that thing right now, mm -hmm. because there's no viable solution for it, because they can put it through a turbine or through an engine, gas powered engine, but it's not economically viable because the sulfur breaks stuff down so fast that you're putting more money in the process and you're receiving back out of it. Yeah. So if you could make something that would pull sulfur out at a viable means so you can get your return on it. 
so it's, it's capital. You got a global market. Okay, I can. I, can, I don't. I don't mind that. You got. You also got like 137 dairy farms nationwide. Cool. That's having the same problem that Texas having. Feel. Um, I think fairly geeky too because it's kind of a smaller market, right? I don't know. It's not gonna, like you're going like to yeah, advertise yeah, it out there. Chemistry, no girls yeah. Find stink damn. Yeah. Right. Pretty high tech. And I, like it's, you know, something there. I think you're saying it's quite hard. On the fairly market. difficult. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go zero or one. I'll, I'll give it a one. Okay. Uh, cellulose waste. It's something that you'd have to do locally because you don't really want to ship the stuff around, right? I mean, that's kind of, I mean, already we do. I mean, I think um, a lot of these grocery stores, cause, you know, pulp mills aren't doing their thing anymore, ship a lot of it out, but. Um, what, what constitutes cellulose waste? You know, cardboard, white office paper, magazines, uh, books, you know, any, any uh, pulpy material right. that was just, Gonna go in the landfill, you know. You throw out your old New York, New York Times phone books. So does that not get recycled when we chuck it in the recycle? Oh, I think it does. I think it does, but it sort of gets shipped rather than reused. Yeah. So I think it, it it well, it stays local, but it could it could be a you know something to do local it becomes a global mm -hmm. model, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. Like, give me an example. That stuff breaks down. I don't think you don't want anything that's gonna have. It's gotta. It's gotta be. Yeah, it can't rot. You know, it's gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm gonna put. A, I'm gonna put a local on that one. Um, kind of geeky. No. Yeah. It's hard because I'm, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd, you'd, have to, you'd have to call it something other than say waste. Because yeah. waste <laughs> call it paper waste, you might, you might be able to make it. All right. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I don't know. What is it? Entrepreneurial, technological. It could be entrepreneurial. Yeah. Tech's, it's not, tech's not that hard. Okay. You have to figure out a way to market it. But, you know, it might be both, because if you can figure out some sort of new technical, technological angle to combine that into, like, a particle board or something. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to say it's relatively easy. I mean, you can, even, I mean, you can just start stuffing, you can start stuffing newspaper in your walls right now if you wanted to. might not be that great, but at least, you know, it's better than nothing. Uh, Polystyrene waste. Um, I think it's it's pretty global. That it, I mean, polystyrene is used around the planet. Yeah. So I guess this is the issue I'm having because it's something you you do locally because you don't want to. Once the polystyrene is here, you don't really want to ship it globally. So I, I guess I it's, it's maybe I, part of sort of global localism, but how how easy is it to replicate? Ah, okay, okay. What you've done in multiple locations, so. All of the stuff you do to make a landfill for a U Montana campus, it's sort of copyable. It's a heck of a lot of work to try and get everyone to do that. Yeah. But it's like you've figured out, you've created a simple way to show people how to take polystyrene waste and use it for insulation. Anyone can sort of pick that up and do that. Okay. So let's, so um, that could be global then. Mm -hmm. I think it's sort of cool and you can explain mean, it. It relates to me just because I bought a few pieces of furniture in the last few days. Oh, yeah. Arrived, so I'm yeah. unpacking about these big bits of polystyrene mm -hmm. and trying to stuff into kind of refuse bags to leave out for the garbage guy. Right. They tell me that I can actually you do something yeah. like that. Yeah. Or at least give it to someone that will make good use of it. And that's yeah. better than sending it to the land. So. Could be cool. Yeah, I think people will dig it. All right. Um, Most entrepreneurial. Most entrepreneurial, yeah. And I Pretty think easy. similar, yeah. Okay, four or five. Um, this one, I, th I think. So I th you're sort of saying the technology's there; it's just about deploying it here. Here, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, was, it would be a kind of a boutique deal, and I, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's kind of geeky. But 
the tech has to be somewhat well, I don't know. It doesn't matter that much. We'll see if this one survives. And then that's probably kind of mid range. Two or three? Yeah. I was thinking three. All right. Um, education with wind turbine, it, you know, it, it's going to be something on the side. We, we could broadcast it to the web, certainly. Right. But, um, you know. I don't know. I, I like. Mm -hmm. You've got to pull it out in somewhere, usually, to ride or to do anything. And if you had the ability to recharge your like electric soak or mm -hmm. electric little four wheeler, yeah. something on there, if that was already included in the trailer, I mean, that's right there, that's a viable market. Mm -hmm. Because people all want to drive hundreds of miles and have to come 100 miles back just to recharge their, their snowmobile. Yeah. I like the education because you can not only do something out of the box thinking with it, you can also show them what in the box thinking has provided, you know, on a, on a small scale as opposed to, the, well, this is this huge wind, big wind farm, you know, how does it work? Yeah. Okay, so that this is um, so the, this is fairly entrepreneurial, and I think it I think it's fairly easy too because we already have the uh, the the trailer. So thermal to electric for transportation. I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill this thing. It's too hard. <laughs> well, that would be good for like Milwaukee Road or something. Right? Yeah. something All right. Big. Well, and then what what about yours there, Adam? Electricity demand reduction. That's a that's a little brand now. You, yeah, you, you plug it in. Um, you, you basically plug it into the wall, and then you plug your gadget in. And it just measures how much electricity is coming through it. I mean, a lot of that is education too, just like educating people how to reduce their own demand. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's global. Yeah, I think it's global. Not cool. Yeah. But again, what do you do with that? I mean, the energy that's you're not using. Well, the, the, the issue with premium on large program on the minimum quality product is almost sort of what's the, what's the business model around it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Electric snowcat. That's definitely Hem hemispheric. Okay. It's definitely cool. Um, it's fairly technical. And what do you give it? Two or three? Two. Okay. Teetering on one, but <laughs> all right. Uh, landfill free Montana. I think that's fairly. You know, it might be rep, rep, replicable, but it's fairly specific to where we are. Cool. Should be cool. There's a lot of tech involved. I mean, this, this is like. Looks like an experiment. That's right. You make any money out of it? Yeah. Um, hard. <laughs> 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 Give it a walk. Students, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seasonal thermal. Um. I like the seasonal thermal um, uh -huh. when you were explaining everything, like you take the compost bin mm -hmm. and set it around like a water tank. Yeah. Okay, so is that global or local? It's global. Yeah. It's cool. I think it's pretty dang cool. Uh, so what entrepreneurs say about it, it's, sort of, it's almost leveraging natural technology, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I'm going to give it like a three or four maybe even, you think? Because uh, it's... I'll give it a three. I, I, I've been working on this at my own house a little bit. It's just like, okay. 
All right, carbon neutral, Camp uh, Montana. Yeah. 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 Might be cool. Very technical. <laughs> and gosh, probably a one. Yeah. The bring inside PV. That's so global. Yeah. I mean, it's been done. You got people that's got the little PV lanterns that you pick up those little lanterns. Mm -hmm. But I like having like a, uh, you have your light in it and it all collapses down on each other like a spring thing, like a candle thing. And then you have your PV on the top so you can just take it out and send it somewhere all day long. And then you walk out and as soon as you pick it up, it would just fall down in and your light would light up and have your little lantern. You like the accordion yeah. idea. Yeah, that's cool. I, mean, I think there's a, a lot of fun kind of design things you can do because the other is, I mean, presumably, it's really out of the PV cell that needs to be outside. Yeah. So you just put those in a little kind of rack and then you bring them in and you plug them into whatever the light fixture. Yeah. I, I, th I think, um, and also there's another one um, de dedicated um, low voltage. So I, I, you know, versus, you know, you're on the grid, it's 110, and it kind of has to be. Um, and that's, that goes back to the whole uh, Tesla Edison yeah. argument. But yeah. so this would be something where you, you, you might have just a, a 12 volt system set up in your house okay. parallel yeah. to the thing. So, because actually, the other thing is now because you set a, essentially a dedicated circuit because you're using the solar power, you yeah. don't need to be connected to a right. power circuit. Right, 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 right. So, like, I just bought a new lamp at my house and I had to buy a little kind of extension lead just to be able to put the lamp where I wanted to put it. Yep. And it's like, well, you don't need to do that. But it was actually greater functionality than PLE. Not being on the grid. And that wouldn't be hard to modify something. Yeah. It's pretty cool, too. I mean, it's, yeah. And entrepreneurial, I think. Design a range of products. And um, kind of on the easy side, too. You've got to, got to lose and buy a bunch and start hacking them up. And yeah, yeah. Make it a right product. Yeah, yeah. Okay, last call for any other um, EPA P3 ideas. The one that Bo just had here, the goal zero. Let's see. Let's see if we can find that really quick. I was just thinking, what if you had something like that that you could, you know, set up during the day, charge during the day, something along the lines of the light, or carry yeah. one of the tickets that you need. Now this is classic, classic sort of innovation because really run. what you're doing is taking something that people said, "Gee, I need electricity when I'm remote, where I can't get electricity." <laughs> what we're actually saying is, what if you can get free electricity? Yeah. From the sun, then why not use that rather than paying for electricity in the home from the utility? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of ways of. So it's, it's just applying a technology in a different situation. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of innovation comes from. It's not necessarily so much the technology, it's about applying something. Oh, yeah. Different. Well, like in Montana, you know, they won't let us generate electricity and sell it to our neighbors because the net metering laws don't allow that. So, how can we kind of get away oh. from that? I like that. Um, so net metering workaround? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So sorry, run that by me again. So you're saying you can't sell your electricity to someone else, but right you now, it's, your own. It's basically tied one meter per system, right? And you can't, they won't let you say, if you're generating more electricity than you need, you can't sell that to your neighbors. Um, you give it to them. Right? I'm not sure you can either, yeah. You, you, you can donate it back to the grid. You can donate it to so like this idea of neighbors. Well, that's what already happens. You know, yeah. Like decentralizing. I'm really into like this. Sure. Whole, like democratizing it. Right. You know, like it's like yeah. Yeah. Coming in, giving you the lines, the meters, and everything for you to use to pump it back out. And I think 
that's the reason they're saying, hey, you know, we'll give you the, the money, basically, in the meters, lines, and everything, the transformers, for you to be able to use this service, you know, you're paying for this service, but we still own that stuff. So for you to be able to pump it out, you have to actually run your own line from one place to the next and have your own system. Yeah. So, here, so here's, here's an idea, and we had a similar conundrum when we were purchasing the wind turbine and determining where to put it, you know, is the, the dean's office is like, you're, you're going to buy a wind turbine. What, what the heck are you going to do with it? And we can well, we're going to we're going to put it on Grizz House A. You know, it's going to make electricity. It's like, well, the whole campus is going to vanish pretty soon. So why would you invest that? So that that's why we went to the, the the trailer model and said, let's just put the dang turbine on the trailer because I haven't seen any laws about that. Um, so may, maybe if maybe the net metering workaround is where you just pull up our multi-energy trailer in front of your house, it, and it could even be a, um, could be a disaster relief or, you know, a, a blackout relief, and in that case, you're like, Northwestern Energy, where, where are you? You know, uh, <laughs> it could be, so, like, what, what are the laws when, when the grid is down? Can you make your own then? I mean, because there, there are, um, there, you know, with, with any PV system, you have to, Take it off offline. Um, we already have the dang trailer. <laughs> the workaround maybe as well is like sort of you can't you sort of can't use the grid to distribute your own electricity. But if you if you've stored your own electricity in some kind of device, because you're just delivering it kind of physically. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Sitting yeah, in front. Yeah. What is what? What would the cost be to manufacture to replicate that trailer into another trailer? Mm. Re take that wind trailer that we got right now. Mm. It's pretty much self-sufficient. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can charge a car. You can charge. Yeah. It, you know, and how much are you going to be able to put up? Are you going to be able to charge enough charge space in there, like to charge more batteries, charge your house? What are you going to take? Can we take this technology and replicate it? Mm -hmm. What is it going to take to do that? Because if you can take it and replicate it. And make it viable and market it. Yeah. Somebody will pay for it. Yeah. Uh, so is this is this a is that a reasonable or or your, yours I guess you I think yours though Adam is more. Um, it, it's much more entrepreneur. Well, it's it, it's it's purest form. It is an idea. It's more of a um, legislative entrepreneur. I mean, it's like the the technologies. Already there. That would be something on the circuit. I haven't actually thought of how to do this yet. Yeah, it's would that be like? Would that be like two trains meeting each other, living in your lines? You have the electricity coming this way, and then you're trying to pump it back out. It would be like two trains colliding. And would static. what? Static. Well, the electricity. When he's when he's talking about getting around around the net metering law, he's talking about okay, so we're making energy here pumping through all these lines and it's coming into my house. Now I want to make it over here and pump it back through all these lines. It's going to be like two trains coming together. You know, is it going to be a big collision and bust out transformers and electrical lines? Or is there some easy way to where you can just make the circuit loop so they go by like uh, when the trains switch tracks? Well, uh, I mean, I guess that already happens now. Like if you put PV on your house, <coughs> the um, The, the load is always going to go to wherever the, the, the electricity is going to go to where the demand is. So the, the grid sitting out there at you know somewhere between, gosh, I don't know, you know 120 and 125 volts, right? And then you've got your um, PV on your house and it's going through an inverter and it's pushing out at, at 125 also. So if you have more voltage on your house than there is on the grid, yeah, your your big voltage train is going to push that other smaller smaller voltage train away. But if there's more voltage on the grid than you're making, the train's going to get pushed in your direction. So that's that's already happened. Well, they have the 50 kilowatt cap, so that they can sort of predict how much that 
predict a train collision. Yeah, so if all of a sudden you get a sunburst and you got 100 kilowatts sitting there, it fires out. Yeah, you could get you could get into some over voltage problems and some over current problems that do start frying circuits. So, so the so the one there is a net metering workaround that is kind of entrepreneurial, but I think there's other ones that are more, much more deeply technological. Um, so may, maybe maybe the last one here would be emergency. Uh, power trailer and well it would have global applicability you know disaster relief um, FEMA. FEMA sure and then um, this this one is slightly more technological I think and then in terms of entry level though I think I think we could do this with our trailer right now I think you could just go park the thing out in front of your house just plug in your appliance. We've got the inverter. We have everything we need, right? So I, I think we're... Um, you wouldn't have to use a dump loader, right? You could just like use a heater in your house. Your house is the dump. Yeah. Your air conditioner in the summer. Yep. Okay. Depending on whether the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. So ideally, the sun would shine on the end and blow all night. Okay, so should we vote? We should, because it's 1130. <laughs> well, I, I really wanted to, you know, by this, by week one, I really wanted to have something for us to focus on and agree on. And then, because, you know, it's, it's a short course, it's only, only five weeks. But I, and I'd really like by week five to have something drafted and then um, maybe what we do is, you know, float it, Paul's way. We're going to have other guest speakers come in who might, you know, help us decide that the idea, you know, look at the EPA criteria, which, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess we, we saw the projects last time, and they were all over the board. I mean, I think, I think some of them had global appeal, some were local, some were very cool, some were very techy, so I don't think it matters that much that we select them based on those criteria? No, I think you're, you're not going to have any trouble in the three right I mean, we've yeah. got the entrepreneurial minimum viable product piece, which is sort of if you're building like a profit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You've got people, I think, is sort of the global and kind of cool thing if you're doing that. You can figure out how, why, why people would be benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. And they're all based on energy, environmental, principles, so yeah. I, I don't think you're going to have any particular issue with that. There may be some finessing in the language. To yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, we, so I thought if we, so there's four of us, if we each get uh, three, three votes, and I guess you can, you can vote on uh, one of them three times, or <laughs> three of them once, or any permutation therein, and then so we just tally it and see see which one comes out on top, and that's the one we go with. Because we can only have one topic. I'd like to choose something that are. So if you allow people to use all three on one, it's sort of if then you're going to create essentially a tie situation. You're going to have to have two on one. Okay, max of two. Max of two. Okay. So you have three, two, one as your votes. So you rank your top three. Uh, I guess that may, yeah, that, that's probably that's probably a better dis distributor. Okay, so that's all right. That's all right. Um, <laughs> and let, actually, group seven and fifteen, and let, group two and twelve, group thirteen and where's that other one? Thirteen and eleven. We don't even have a, we, I, I nuked, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I nuked number eight, so I mean, there's no, that's fine though, that's fine. Wait, what do you want to group then? Okay. Two in that category too, because you can also educate on the stamp product because that's an education thing. Okay. Um, 
So I guess I don't mind. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind knocking out education because we we will have education in there. So I'll just I'll just. I don't, I don't necessarily want to knock it out. I would just like to group it. It's with it's with sixteen. Yeah, education shall occur. Uh, I'll I'll just put this I'll put the seven in in brackets there. So if you're voting for sixteen, you're also voting for seven. And what was the other one? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll just I'll I'll say this is sort of the the task, and it's grouped with um, thir thirteen. Okay, so let's just put three. We'll put three in with that. I like that. Right? Because you're gonna do you're gonna do three anyway, right? Well, you should. <coughs> All right. Could you could you actually group four and five? I mean, that cellulosic waste and insulation waste. Could you use them both? Oh, okay. Sure. 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 The insulation. Okay. But essentially, about using waste materials for it. Yeah. yeah. Using yeah. not just localizing okay. to just paper or something. Yeah. You yep. Yeah. Plastics too. Yeah. I like that. Because actually, if I think about, I mean, just the example I was giving us, yeah. that was that was cardboard and what exactly. does that mean? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, even you use wood in that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So it's not. Mm hmm. Uh, okay. Uh. Any others? Maybe let's um let's rank these by the the you know minimum I mean? viable. So I I I kind of I, I like that model a lot. I'd mm -hmm. kind of like to push towards the minimum viable as one of our criteria because. Minimal funds. You're not going to get a whole lot of money. So yeah. let's let's rank them by minimum viable uh, data sort. Where'd you go there? Um, headers. Okay. You didn't, you didn't want to do that. No. Let's see here. I'm going to delete that. Ding. Uh, project. Minimum viable. Let's do, yeah, largest to smallest. Okay. Let's say let's say th let's say th um, three three. Your most th is it what's your most favorite? Sixteen. My most favorite is probably sixteen. Sixteen. Give that a three. And then what else? Um, Four. And then two. So you, so you so um, is this is this it? No, I mean I like the bring the PV inside thing. Okay. But I also like the two foot wall thing that you got two feet walls and you can dump stuff in it because my new home is designed with two feet walls. Okay. <laughs> how about um, how, how about you, Adam? Well, Gary's thinking that one over. In that order, fourteen, four. Did I do that right? Okay. Paul, what are, what are yours? 
Why is this not? Maybe I'm the same as uh, Adam, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, okay. Is, it, are, is that you for sure? Is that where you're at, Gary? That's where I'm at because that's. Okay. That, that has so much potential for a marketability because, I mean, you know, imagine if they had those to roll right down into New Orleans. Mm hmm. You know, there, Katrina would come rolling through. Mm -hmm. You'd have the energy the next day. Mm -hmm. These people, you could plug in and they could use it. I mean, not on that scale. You'd have to. I mean, semi truck scale. Mm -hmm. The big wind turbine that you can like back up and go downtown. So you want to. Yep. Okay. So I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, you kind of know what the answer is based on. What okay. Doing, yeah. Well, here here's uh, <clears throat> I guess here's my thing from an educational perspective. Yeah. Well. What, one, I, I think we could, and and, and what, so we're, we got to go to Washington, D.C. anyway with our gadget, and we're not going to take our house there, but what we could do is um, bring inside PV. I mean, in the, in the trailer, we already have batteries, so we could, you know, simulate the small battery in the, in the PV that's there. It's already got a low voltage circuit. Um, I think there's something powerful about the 14 and 16, this idea of sort of bringing free energy from solar and potentially from wind mm -hmm. inside the home mm -hmm. without necessarily having to do it in a, gee, I've got to put all this big well, turbine at the end of my yard or put solar panels on the roof. Those little gopher things you stick in your yard <laughs> yeah. to, so they rattle the gophers out? What's the, cost, what's the cost to <laughs> what's the cost to throw a little tiny turbine on there? We'll say one day the sun ain't shining because there's a huge rainstorm coming through, so you got these little gopher turbines. Yeah, you yeah. set in your yard and instead of um instead of catching the light, you know, you've got you got a solar panel on top, right? But you're catching both of them. What about just like a little treadmill in the gopher hole? So when they run past they Go, go, Fred Flintstone on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, so I, th I think we need to go with the trailer because um, we're gonna we'll, we'll take our own trailer to DC, and if we wanted to, um, and maybe maybe we do have a way, and maybe, maybe we do look because I, I think there are gonna be dedicated low voltage standards that are out there. In fact, I know if we went into um, NFPA 70, which is the National Electric Code that we just tested on in, in, um, in uh, 195, I think we'll start to see that emerge. So maybe we, we work some of this in, and just, just for completeness, I, I really do like this guy a lot. Uh, it, it's my favorite. I know, I know, but I, I, we want to, and then, um, I, this is this is this is another one of my pets as well. So we'll we'll, we'll accomplish that too. We are, we already have funding to do that. We've got a 130 grand to do that. So non-allied. I, I don't understand the non-allied plastic one. I'm just going to throw that out there. Non-allied. Just stuff that allied landfills instead of recycles. That's all. Just th things stuff that goes to land. Stuff that goes to landfill instead of back into the uh, manufacturing stream. That's all it is. So let me just give you one perspective on yeah. 16 versus 14. Yeah. I may have you maybe sort of refined the proposition. Yeah. So an emergency power trailer is clearly a larger thing and is essentially used in emergency. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. So it has, I mean, it has a valuable impact on it. I think a treatment example is a great, great example. Um, but it is sort of then confined to those situations where there's emergency and where you've got one of these honking Oh yeah, things yeah, yeah, to yeah. Take to a location to use it, mm -hmm. as opposed to getting people using their kind of gopher windmills and yeah. little kind of solar cells. Anyone could buy half a dozen of those, stick them in the backyard, oh. benefit from the wind, benefit from the sun, yeah. and 
maybe save five percent on their electricity bills because they're powering their night lights or their kids kind of bedside lamp. Ah, uh, yeah. Powering the toaster in the morning or whatever it is. That's a good point. That's a good point. So maybe looking at so I, I, it might be worth spending some time thinking about how you could sort of combine also the two of those. Yeah. You know, really big heavy battery bank power. You know, more than I remember the old flashlights that we had to pack around little freaking what was those little canned batteries that were the little square things that were a little heavy and you'd pack around like a miner's light? Yeah. I those two. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing to, to look, and, and the whole reason for ranking on this minimum viable product was, well, for us, the minimum viable, it, it's pretty easy because we're going to have one. <laughs> but, for the, but like you're saying, for the average consumer, no, why don't, why don't I just start out, start off could small? We, uh, could we combine 16, 14, and 17 and make it 16? Yep, seven's already there. So if we combine 16, 14, and 7, it would basically, we've already got to trigger, but we would have to kind of make that just one facet of the proposal. So you got this trailer for emergency situations, you know, and you got all these lights, but yet these lights here that we're making, you say your little gopher windmill out or your little thing, you know, that yeah. is on a global scale. So you, you've added more to your pot of treasure basically when you open when people open this box there's just not a trailer in there that's you know you gotta pull it around yeah I mean, the, the sort of idea of sort of having a, a number of sort of smallish items they don't necessarily create a lot of power but both the average consumer can use them in their own home mm -hmm. but also in an emergency situation you may not be creating kind of massive power mm -hmm. for a location but you might be creating enough power that someone's literally they've been had a hurricane blow through Florida Mm -hmm. and they're in a tent. Mm -hmm. They've got enough power to give it a little bit of light in the tent to power their cell phones, to be able to make some calls, yeah. maybe power up a computer, maybe kind of power up a, a, something to do some kind of cooking with or something. Mm -hmm. And you could even think about combining then the two-for-one model that says, you buy these for your house and we'll put packs of these together to send to disaster locations and or to the third world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, and get that. Um, I don't think it made it on here, but the the, the two for one model yeah. a little bit. But plus, I was when I was combining seven with it, all three of them was like right. you know, okay, look at this windmill up here. You're looking at it 20 feet. You set the little gopher in there. Like, oh, the same thing as this. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, when the little kid would go, ooh, that's more my level. I can yeah. I can deal with this yeah. because I hate looking up. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even having. Telling your daughter or whatever to go plant a little windmill in the backyard, and then that's going to create enough energy to power her kind of her night like to read, to read before she goes to bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we, so I think we've got the we've got the people in there, um, the the prosperity. I guess I don't understand. Is the prosperity supposed to happen for for the uh, in inventor the it, or it's really the, the venture has to be profitable because if you're not profitable, you can't sustain. Yeah. It. Okay. Right. 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 So okay. Profit's not actually a bad thing because mm -hmm. you don't make profits. You yeah. Be around very long, so you've not yeah. Done yeah. That's why I was wondering what is what's the price it's going to take someone to replicate the trailer. So we'd have to do price check basically the trailer. We'd have to price check our little PV cells. You know, can we ramp those? Can we wrap the lights up a little bit? Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're just basically for markers so the airplane doesn't go off the track. Right. Not really bright enough to power a nice big light in your house like for one of these. Whereas but I mean, I was looking at this stuff in Lowe's. I mean, I haven't started this and I was just, was just the consumer buying some stuff. Yeah. So I bought ones that were like five bucks, but you can buy ones that are like 25 bucks and they're saying like they're eight times as bright. Yeah. That's kind of like the little kind of ones you just put on the pathway. Mm -hmm. So. But even then, I mean, like 25 bucks, and that's got all of their costs and profit in it. So the cell is generating up eight times the light. It's probably going to be three bucks or something. So um, I'm wondering, could, could we, um, 
So I, th I think maybe the, the vision that's emerging here is like, our trailer is going to take this technology, and maybe it is the, 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 the small, um, like we're saying, uh, the garden variety, everybody can, can get one. Um, and you know, we actually use our larger system to maybe power these in, a, in a, an emergency if, if um, I don't know, because we've got the larger battery bank and uh, maybe the sun didn't shine. So. Yeah, but, but, and maybe sort of part of the funding, particularly if you've got the phase two, is almost to sort of be able to redesign your trailer to make it a much more sort of multifunctional, multi kind of purpose. Yep. Okay. And, yep, yep, yep. Um, yep. And, and to be able, able to build sort of, you've got a, I mean, you've got that trailer's what, kind of, I don't know, 10 by 10 by 10 or something, 10 mm -hmm. by 6 or something. Mm -hmm. It's like we want to create mini versions of that that are sort of that kind of suitcase mm -hmm. size mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sort of open out and they've got a bunch of different things in them yeah. which you can either then take them out and stick them around your yard or if you're in a kind of refugee camp or you're in a disaster zone, kind of stick them out over here or over there. So guys, do you, do you think we could make these things? Because, I mean, we made our own solar panels for the 2012 car, you know, it's sitting over there, it's in rough shape. I mean, the thing just took a major beating, but, you know, you could go get a stack of uh, PV wafers for, for pretty cheap, because, you know, really nobody wants to touch the dang thing. I mean, I've, and I've used the Pringles potato chip analogy several times, like, you know, soldering Pringles potato chips together, <laughs> and you, you do end up with crumbs. But we have, we have expertise, um, you know, it's something that we could, we, we could make. And shoot, I could even see, um, I, could, I, could, I could sneak my non-allied plastics in here too, because I, I'm sure whatever you bought yeah, did yeah. have plastics in it, right? right? It was just some little yeah, yeah, yeah. injection molded job. Um, so you could well, then, do, uh, then do, some 3D, do some 3D printing. Oh, 3D printing, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Wow. Well, how heavy yeah. are you going to need to make your frames for your um, for your PV cells? You're obviously, Well, I think the one Paul had, I mean, it's, it's just a little tiny, almost disposable. I, I can even look it up if you yeah, want me yeah. to yeah, show it on the screen. It's got a lot of his... What was the name of it? Uh, just go solar, solar lights. Lights, okay. For garden? garden. Yeah. A bunch of different designs. And was it one of these, like, stick in the ground kind of jobs? Yeah, my ones are different that's designs. That's I've, got, I've got a contemporary home, so they, these ones What's are more like little kind of tubes. Were they metal or plastic too? Plastic. Okay. Wall black solar power, thirty nine dollars for just a. Oops. I will see. Was it, so it's not the top one here. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of different styles. I think you yeah. know. Oh, there's the yeah, rock. Well, that, Oh. <laughs> uh, that's a solar rock. Was that a, was that a speaker on there? Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, those are square ones, but I got tube ones like that. That one. This guy right here. Yeah. Okay. So when just, it's just black plastic. The solar cell sits on the top. Yeah. Okay. But it's almost like kind of you've got that piece at the top, which is probably I think got the the lamp or the bowl. Mm -hmm. Inserted into it. I mean, that's that's the only piece you need to sort of stick out. Something. Yeah, yeah. And then you can create a device, your own design of a device internally, which you sort of plug that into. So instead of so, if you're doing a light, then you'd create a light that that thing plugs into. You can create a cool design. Yeah. But maybe you also create a device that says, well, instead of having a bulb connected into it, yeah, yeah. I'm going to plug that into a little device that now powers my toaster. D diverts it back into the house. Or oh yeah. Whatever. I like that. It's just it's almost just a switch. Is right. really, is what it ends up being. Cool. And and because um, because right now this thing just sits inside. Gosh, I wish my silly pad here was working. Man, this thing is. I just down. I have a new new um, new laptop. I, I, <laughs> I mean, you've been to my lectures. I, I live with this thing. I feel a little hobbled at the moment, but. Uh, so maybe, let's just do this. Um, 
Okay, so you're looking to reuse the Ally plastics, but you know, basically, could, are they going to be hard enough to, to house a structure like that? And are we going to be able to meet code with something? Because we're going to have to look for code. We're going to have to look for code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're thinking, we make our initial prototype, we'll make that 3D printed out. Yep. Have everything hooked up so we could just hook it into that, but then we're going to take our prototype that we've 3D printed, which is going to be more solid than the allied plastic. See, because I, sure, I can take aluminum and I can take something from a 3D printer, get it, put it in an aluminum forge, and make it exactly the same in aluminum. Now, the working parts that you're getting in a 3D printer are going to be the same. But so now, my my theory is, you know, we can take the um, solar forge that we got. Oh, yeah. Could we use a solar forge to melt the plastic and then take from the crucible to the plastic, pour it in our molds, you know, sand gravel, I don't know what we'd use, a little bit of crystal maybe, to hold the sand together from our 3D printer, or are we going to have uh, a solid mold made out of some sort of metal that we can just take apart? It's a good question. Um, but I think, I think what we do here, I think what Paul was saying is that's that's um, neat. So you've got your you've got your your little PV sitting here, and right now I wish I could draw better in, in, in PowerPoint on the fly, but um, right now the the energy from each cell just goes right into a battery that just and there's, a, there's a photo sensor in there too that turns it on. Right. But I think what you what you do is um, you have this distributed power already. They're like shoot. Light is not the priority now. Now it's uh, running the radio what in the house. Or, yeah. 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 So it's you, kind you of you almost a, imagine a little device where you sort of it's either built into that or you you connect that into that then actually would take well, a regular I think that's what power. Was, mm -hmm. He was talking about with from um, your toaster from yeah your lamp from yeah whatever, or you create certain devices so you can create some cool design kind of lamps and things. Well, that and would you, be you actually plug this inside the shade and nobody knows the difference. Right. It's a stationary setup in your yard. You just plug it in, and then you can set your battery or whatever your mm -hmm. capturing station is behind it. Mm -hmm. Have like a little no pill handle on it. And yep. you come home at night and pick it up and go in. Yeah. You just have a basic plug in inside of it. And you just, uh, yeah. Plug in. You'd have to. Have well, you got a, you got a dozen of these. Yeah. And you just take them all out. And you put them in your little devices around the house. Yeah. Is that? I mean, that sounds novel enough. I, I, trying to get the technical realities of I mean, powering LED doesn't take very much use, whereas powering bigger things does. Sure. Power. Yeah. No. That that's that's. That's maybe something to talk about later. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think the idea of, of taking this and just and using a, a like it's already exists, modifying a little bit. That's kind of our minimum product. We have a whole stack of, of uh, PV cells we could use. Gary was talking about already going nutty on the manufacturing. Certainly a rapid prototype a couple. Uh, put, put the circuit diagram together. So guys, you want to go with that? I like it. Well, you run the you run the suitcase to your neighbor's house, right? So then there's the the workaround. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm also thinking, you know, when, you, when I go through the airport, I hate packing my bags around, so I have something that I just pull the thing out that's got wheels on it, just roll it. Right. Yeah. So I mean, something like that. It's also as well if you've got this kind of giant sort of you got the trailer with the generator, you've now got to connect that to sort of this camp with people in tents and whatever. It's like, well, what if we put yeah. any of these boxes? I guess I guess what I wanna what I wanna um, not do is you know replicate this thing that's sure. already on the market. You know these these guys, Jonathan Bow showed. You, you see Bose? He, he bought yeah, one. I've seen it. You know you can go small enough to charge like a cell phone. I mean I guess. So I think I think the I think the networking and this thing is I th I think really made for you know strictly mobile, but. I think if, if you can get, if you can take what's currently just a mobile device or just a decorative device, 
and make it more u utilitarian. Uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's the way I to go. That. I mean, if you this, can, this, nobody, I have, can we see, like, a, a Bitcoin mining rig that's going to be set up with Because nobody's, nobody's combined this technology with, like, taking one of these and then... Small turbine? Okay, I've been I've been dying to 3D print a wind turbine. Have you? Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's time. <laughs> uh, I mean, once you get all the little intricate pieces like there, right there, it's already yeah. made in the components. Yeah. Make your and maybe the maybe the education part. So we already have our one little solar cell. Um, maybe we could make a little mini. Turbine and shoot, make a make a compressed air while we're at it. <laughs> so, sort of the thing about the kind of the, do do you remember saying about the kind of the story yeah. and the kind of the pitch piece. Yeah. If you imagine, I'm sure we could do the calculation and find the data that says how much electricity is consumed every day with people recharging their cell phones. Mm. Oh yeah. What if you got everyone on the planet to stop recharging using the grid oh. and putting one of these devices outside their door so that when they came home at night they picked it up. Okay. Their cell phone. Okay. You're just you're just you're just sore about the storage because you had to sit out there and weld in the, in the rain all day. That's the only reason you don't No, I didn't have to weld in the rain. <laughs> I didn't do anything in the rain. I'm sore about it. I lost time from going to one place. To <laughs> okay. So I think we've got the we've got the um, taking these portable lawn devices. Make, uh, networking them, sort of repurposing them for more utilitarian, going through like a like a switch. Maybe we can hijack the grid idea a little bit too. If you're doing this in your backyard, uh, the the cell phone charge it sounds like a I don't know if you man you you mandate or dictate it, but just it's an option or, or a goal or a challenge maybe. And then um, what's the average life of a cell phone? I mean. <coughs> I'm going to guess in terms of people turn over really quickly versus those that hang on for a while, it's probably somewhere in the 12 to 18 months. Yeah. I've managed to keep one alive so for five or six years. Take, it's, it's a year and a half. Kind of a Moore's Law charge, thing. What's the charge to um, how, how many volts is it? How many volts are you going to need to charge it? Is it going to be like 100 volts? Is it going to be like 100 volts? Are you going to need to charge itself on? Um, 12. 12 volts? Yep. To charge it for it? Well, no, you're going to need 12. 12 volts times however many amps times its its resistance. Times the life of the cell phone. Hmm. Which would be what, 360, so. Pretty sure like 20 months. See, and then, and then we, when we did that, when we did that equation, we would basically have the information for his little stamp oh, on, sure. on the cell phone. That's, that's oh, the, your stamp, okay, yeah. That's yeah. how much it's going to be, so we could combine that into all of everything we were doing with the cell phones. You know what I mean? Yeah. The toasters. Yeah. And that, that would be just micro, like, information that a company, say, Frito-Lay <coughs> or Westinghouse, you know, or Motorola would pay to buy that logo stamp, you know, and every time they stamped on a phone, they get four or five cents. Cool, guys. So we are out of time. I'm out of battery, but it um, sounds like we've got at least a, an idea to go go forward with. So let's. Uh, there's no there's no class on Friday. I, Shit. Yeah, I know. Darn it. I, <laughs> I do I do have um, I do have the first couple chapters from Lovins there. So let's just let's just read through read through the first couple chapters of Lovins. Uh, I'll try to come up with a few quiz questions on it. So read that. And, and what, I, what I think I'll probably do is just have um, 
you know, the, the quiz for week one be due at some point during week two. So the, the chapters are online. You should be able to read through them, and I'll get some, some quiz questions out there. So, gosh, Paul, thanks a lot for coming. Hey, um, it's good, 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 good brainstorming. That's always hey. fun. And shoot, we'd, we'd love to um, throw some Can ideas. Send me this updated list. Yeah, yeah. Because it's the number two or three there that I think would be worth sort of exploring. Okay. With, with some other with, students. With some and, other students. Yeah. And obviously, if we do something, I'll put you in the loop in case and, these guys want to. And we do have some pretty good technical know-how. You know, Nikki Fear came in from climate change. She's like, oh my gosh, you guys actually have tools sitting on your desk and, you know, and parts. And like, yes, that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Joe, Joe Fungo and I and Scott Winberg went out to Montana Tech as well, kind of recently as well. So oh, yeah. Oh, no. Great kind of skills and oh, neat. tools and things.